Okay, let's look at some of the saving options that you have in Pro Tools. So they're all available here under the File drop-down menu. You can see there are three, Save, Save As, and Save Copy In. You can also create or save as a template. In other words, you could uh, create a Pro Tools session with all of the parameters the way that you want it and then save it as your own personal template. Save is just the standard save function. It overwrites the data and saves it to your hard drive or wherever you have saved your Pro Tools session. The Save As command leaves the original session unchanged and allows you to continue working on a renamed copy. So if I go here and select Save As, then, and I save this one as Vox Test 1. Right now you can see I'm in Vox Test. As soon as I hit Save, you can see now I'm in Vox Test 1. So this might be useful if you're working on a song and you like what you have, but you'd like to experiment and do some other things. You could do Save As, and that will leave your original the way that it is, and then allow you to experiment. The third command is Save Copy In. This brings up a dialog box and allows you to do a few different things. You can change your audio file type. You could change your sample rate or your bit depth. You can also include your audio files uh, when you make a copy. So what I usually do is I'll use Save Copy In if I want to make an exact duplicate of my session uh, to maybe store in the cloud or on a different hard drive. Then I'll select this and you know leave these parameters the same. I also might use this Save Copy In feature if, for example, a client of mine has Pro Tools 10 but doesn't have Pro Tools 12. So then I'll come up here and say, okay, I need to save my Pro Tools session as maybe an earlier version of Pro Tools. Lastly, if you want to change your sample rate or your bit depth, you can do that at the same time. So a lot of times I may get a session from somebody, maybe it's in 48, and I asked them to do it in 44.1. So I'll do a save copy in and create the correct session parameters by using this function. If you know the location of your session, you can open it by just coming up here and saying open session. Um, a lot of times you may not remember where a specific session is located and so you need to find that. The best way to find a session file is with the workspace browser. You can find the browser under the window drop down menu and then workspace, new workspace. And option I is the shortcut. There are two specific ways to search using the workspace window. One is simple search, which is this button located right here, and the next is advanced search, which is located right here. Simple search allows you to search for any specific name. So, you know, maybe I had drums in the in the name. The problem with that is it's going to give you every single item that has the name drums in it. So, folders, loops, all kinds of things. That won't help you find your Pro Tools session as rapidly as you want. The best way to find your session is to use Advanced Search. Click on that, and then here under the first column, we're going to go down to Kind. What kind of file are we looking for? Kind is any, not any. We could choose a media file, audio file, or you could choose a session file, and that's what we want. So now it's going to find all of the Pro Tools session files that are located, in this case, on my volumes. See, I've got all of my volumes listed here. So it's going to look there. If I have something else selected, it will find just the volumes located, in this case, in my Documents folder, because that's the only place I've got a few uh, Pro Tools sessions. Now that we've narrowed down all of our files to just session files, we could go ahead here and add an additional column and then search for specific names. So maybe I'm looking for anything that has UVU in the title. And now it's given me all of the Pro Tools session files that have UVU in the title. So this is a great way to narrow down your sessions and uh, open them. You can open them by just double clicking on them. Now I'm not going to do that because I've already got a session open so you can hear the audio. But that's how you open a Pro Tools session file from the workspace window.